as I'm going to change my ideas on my 110 project from an automatic back to a 300 TDI manual, <clears throat> I need a clutch. So I need to, a, a clutch master, a, a tower assembly. Um, this is the one that came with the truck. It's pretty nasty. But what we're going to do is, we're going to change the cylinder and we're going to set it up correctly. But first of all, we're going to strip it down to all its relevant bits and pieces and sandblast it and then we'll paint it. And, uh, and then it'll look nice. Now this is the older style because it's got the wide uh, pedal. The, the later ones had a single piece of bar down here with a helper spring on here. And I haven't really found out what the helper spring really does but it seems to work. Um, <clears throat> so and what we're going to notice is that there's an adjuster on the back here. We try not to try not to take that out if possible. And if we do take it out, well, we'll make a note of what it's the distance is. And the reason for that is it keeps the pedal uh, relative height to the floor of the car. You don't want it too high because it's going to be uncomfortable when you press it. Um, and you don't want it too low because you won't get the full stroke of the pedal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down. Uh, it's not too difficult. I'm not going to really show you how to strip it down because it's really really easy. But basically what we're going to do is take the, the bolts out of here, top and bottom, there's another one down there, and then if this will move, it's probably so it's seized up solid. It, it seized up solid. So I'm going to try and get these bolts out of here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So um, let me see what I can do. And I'm, this time, I think what I'll do, I'll take this, try and get this pin out of here and strip it down 100% and get some oil or grease onto that bushing. Just a little thing is, some of the old vehicles used to have a grease point on here. That was brilliant. What, what forward thinking was that? You could just give them a bit of a grease. Now you can. Well, there's progress for you. On this particular unit, I just put it in the vise to see what it's like and you can see it moves a little bit. So we know this pivot's actually okay. What it's done is it's seized on the shaft. Now I'm going to replace this cylinder and I always replace them with a OEM or a genuine cylinder. I try to get the OEM ones, girling ones or TRW to fit. Uh, Chinese ones, no. <laughs> the actual machining isn't too bad on the uh, aluminium body. And I'm always just, just a bit suspicious about the rubbers and things like that. They don't seem to last that long. And If you're doing this on a left-hand drive car, replacing this piece, you know it's an absolute nightmare to get in and out. So, um, put a good one on because you don't want to do it twice. If you find out that you can't, the, the shaft is seized up inside the cylinder, uh, and it won't move. Just simply undo these bolts first and this will allow this will allow the pedal to move backwards and forwards like that so you can get to the adjusting bolts here. You don't have to do cutting and grinding, you don't have to be sort of brutal. So I'm going to undo this one now and uh, we'll get see what the rest of it's like. So I've got the cylinder off and as you can see, it's seized up, the piston's seized up. Sometimes you can buy seal kits for these and sometimes people do strip them down. I have actually done it myself when the, only when the bore is perfect and even then I'll only put genuine girling seal kits in. Uh, I'm going to strip down a new one just to show you what it's like inside but sometimes I don't know, is it worth rebuilding? I mean, if you don't have another one, you're miles away from anywhere, rebuild it, but trying to get the piston out of here, you'll probably damage the bore, and uh, thus rendering it scrap. I have a machine shop who will actually hone these out. Um, yeah, he does a nice job. But the other thing is, you can actually now get a, a sleeve, a stainless steel sleeve to put in these. But again, the price of a sleeve and putting it in, and it, it, you might as well get a genuine one. 
the reason why they sort of seize up a lot is that they get moisture and water in the uh, hydraulic fluid uh, and also this topper was missing so water can get inside and that's never a good thing uh, it's supposed to have a cover with a gasket on it this one's missing unfortunately so I've got to have a dig around and see if I can find one sure I've got one somewhere but um, keeping the water out is very important because uh, well, you can see the consequences, and an ounce of prevention is a lot better than a pound of cure. After a good old sandblasting, it sort of looks a bit like new. Now, the important thing once you've sandblasted something, to get some paint on extremely quickly. I reckon it's around about 20 minutes to get some paint on, because the humidity in the atmosphere will make it go rusty because at this time it's really susceptible to rust. Now I couldn't get the pin out, well, I suppose I could, but it doesn't really need it because it's actually quite nice. It feels uh, really nice and I think with a bit of oil it'll be, uh, there's no play in it or anything like that. So the next thing is, like I say, painting it. But one of the things you should observe, and you don't really see this too much, you see here, there's a little hole here, and there's one at this side too. Now that, that is, because when this is on the vehicle, remember these videos we've been doing about um, water ingress and coming through the footwell? Well, if water can get into the top of the footwell, it builds up on the top of this pedal. Because it's just, you know, when you put the, the, this on your bulkhead, this can fill up with water and corrode. So, they put some little holes in here, as you see, just here. They're not really big enough, so I'm going to drill them out to a little bit bigger, so any water can, that gets in can get out, because that, that can block up with uh, dirt and sand and all sorts of stuff. Unfortunately, it's really near a, a nut, so I'm going to try and drill it from this side here, see if we can work it out. So I drilled them out quite big, those holes, and uh, now you can see there's plenty of room to get water out. It was a bit difficult trying to get the drill into the hole, but anything's better than what it was. So now I'm going to give this a quick coat of paint. If it's pretty cold where you live, warm up the piece first, providing it's got no rubber in it. It'll be fine, just give it a quick warm and the paint will dry quicker. This was outside overnight so it's kind of cold. And when you give it a paint, the paint will dry. You don't want it red hot, you just want it sort of warm to touch. Like I said, don't do this if there's any rubber or plastic or anything. As I say, if at first you don't succeed, cheat. So I put some uh, Corostop um, primer. Uh, it's most important when you've done sandblasting to get primer on. Sometimes you can use some paints that will just go straight on the top. Um, <clears throat> But in this condition I'm using this red oxide type flat paint and it will make a good bond to keep any corrosion out in the future. Um, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to paint it black but in the meantime I'll push it to one side, clean up the bench and we'll take a cylinder apart. So here we go, we've got a brand new cylinder. This is a TRW one made in the UK so what we're going to do we're going to have a look inside and make sure it's all nice and clean some of the things about um, clutch problems especially is as you press your pedal down fluid from this cylinder goes obviously to you this is called a master cylinder 
but the fluid in the cylinder goes down to your slave cylinder. Now when that fluid leaves this chamber, it can produce a vacuum in the top. And this is most important, you see those little holes in there, and there's a little, t I don't know if you can see, there's a little tiny hole in the top of the cap, and that's to allow it to breathe. That's allowed to allow atmosphere to take place of the fuel, uh, fluid that's gone. If this is blocked, you have all sorts of problems. You have all sorts of problems breathe, uh, bleeding your brakes or clutch. So just make sure that this is all nice and free. You can actually blow through it if you want. Um, so that's just a little thing to, to be wary of. I don't know what the old one was like. Where's the old one going? Oh, it's here. There's different types. On the old girling ones, you see, look at that. look at the corrosion in there. It's it's terrible. We're on the old corrosion on the old girling ones. You used to flick this cap off, and you see, there's a little cutout in here. Well, that was to allow. <laughs> looks like it's been allowed to get dirt in there, but it would allow uh, air to come in through this centre. There's actually a hole in the middle of here, so that was its breather. So just make sure that these aren't blocked up. All right. So next thing, I'm going to take this apart. Now, sometimes these rubbers are a bit stiff. There we go. We take the rubber off, and there's a little circlip in there. Now, sometimes there are a little clip that you push together, and sometimes there are a little circlip. In this instance, it's a little circlip. So we're going to put our pliers in there. And pull that clip out. The rod will come out, exposing the piston. Now you may have noticed something here, that there's no grease or oil and nothing in it. Well, there's a little bit of fluid, but nothing spectacular. So what we're going to do is, we're going to, that's why I'm taking it apart, I'm going to come, because I'm going to grease it. So if you tap it on the bench, you'll find the whole assembly comes out. Now these are, uh, you know, to, if you're going to rebuild a cylinder, you get a rubber and you get a little um, seal for the bottom. But sometimes it's kind of difficult for people to work out how to get this, <laughs> this apart. It's really, really easy. Um, there is a little uh, tang in here. So I'm going to just reach across and get a smaller screwdriver and I'll be back. So to get these apart, you simply try and compress the spring in your hand and at the same time get underneath and try and pull that tang open and then this will come off and then you can separate the parts. Now if you can get this piece out, it should come out. I wanted to show you the top. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. Maybe that tang's a bit tight. These are a close fit. I might have to cut this bit out. This spring assembly here is held together with this shaft and this has got a really special little end in it so what you do is you put this piece in here and pull it to the center and then when you assemble it carefully it won't drop out now the th most important thing is when you reassemble it is to push this little tang back in so it locks in so I'm going to do that right now it doesn't need much pressure and it doesn't need to go that far just like that you see don't do it too far if you're going to replace the seals, the seal always pushes towards the, the, side, the, uh, the pressure side. Don't put it the other way around, otherwise you'll have fluid all over your carpet inside. What's with this? The other thing that's important, and a lot of people don't understand this bit, is this little bit, this little fellow here. And it's quite an important little bit, because it's a valve. Now, if we take the housing off, we can just put that to one side for a minute. 
and you'll see there's a spring on here and then there's a seal, a little cup seal. Now how that works and what it does is really important and you can see it moves, it's allowed to move. As your clutch is being pushed down this will shut off the um, pressure going towards the reservoir. Now I don't know if you can probably see right down inside there, probably not. Can you see? There's a little shiny machine bit right down at the bottom. Let me try and get a flashlight. I don't know if you can still see. Wait a minute. I'll edit this bit out so we can get a good view. Hmm. Really tricky to see because I need to put the flashlight in. Let's see if we can see it like that. No, not really. You'll have to take my word for it. So anyway. When you put your foot on the clutch, and this pushes this this uh, this rod pushes into the cylinder, this little valve pushes against here, right at the very end, and it stops pressure going back into the reservoir. Now, some of you may have ex experienced sometimes when you can't pump your clutch, your clutch doesn't work. It's full of fluid. Oh, you can't bleed it out, you can't do anything with it. It's sometimes this little seal at the end has failed. Or it's got dirt at the end and it can't pump. When you pump, it, it's, the, the fluid is being pushed along here and back into the reservoir. So that's why this is really important. It stops that fluid going back. Alright, so uh, these will only go on one way by the way. So I'm going to reassemble this now. And... Uh, we can put this all back together again. So push it together like that. You've already pushed your little tang in. So now you compress your spring and lock that piece together. Now be careful at this stage because the damn thing can ping across the floor. And then simply push your push it all together and that shaft will actually go, this is hollow, so this shaft will go inside here. And of course, this is how it works. When you push your clutch in, this seal is allowed to go forward a little bit. That's why it's got a spring in it. And it's also got a spring in it to push the cylinder back. It's kind of complicated to do. Maybe one day I should cut open a uh, cylinder and show you. So that's how it's put back together. Really, really easy, simple. 19, what was it, 1950s? Easy. I'm going to lubricate everything with this Lockheed rubber grease which I have had for decades and I'm gradually running out so if anybody knows where I can get another tin of it let me know. Don't use grease because grease will eat the rubber. So we're going to put a smear around the cylinder, around the piston and around that seal. We're not going to put anything on here because that, that doesn't need any grease. But this, this end here can be exposed to the elements if the, if the end cap is compromised. So I'm going to just put a little bit inside that bar and we're going to push that back together. And you can see how easy that went. We're also going to put a little bit in the cap at the end and I'm going to put this in the vise now and turn the camera around so you can see what we're doing. And then it is just a simple matter of putting the shaft in like that. Oh, put the clip in. Make sure that clip is firmly home. Next, another thing I like to do is put some grease inside this cap. Cap on. That will last a long time now. 
All right, so that's an easy thing to do. So I think my paint's almost dry, so now I can crack on and put some top coat on. As you can see, I'm just using a, a little can. I'm not using my spray gun or anything like that because it's not really worth it. This is a, a semi-gloss. I, I like semi-gloss on Land Rovers because doing it glossy is a bit too, well, it's too much. Now, when you're painting with a can, get a decent distance away and you know not not sort of like right up to here and spray it because that's a waste that's a waste you'll get runs everywhere um, a couple of light coats is better than one big thick coat and try and get it as, in all the little nooks and crannies and then here's where it gets a bit dirty tip it over and do the bits that you couldn't see at the back again light coats And just keep changing the angles of it every now and again. I'm just going to leave that to flash off. And then we'll come back to that. So that's got two layers of protection on it. The paint's supposed to keep the weather off and the primer's supposed to stop the, you know, key the paint to the metal. It's kind of technical but uh, it works quite nice. So I'm not going to touch that because it's a nice coat. I'm going to leave it then we'll come back. With our pedal tower now all nicely painted up, we can start to assemble it. What I'm going to do, first of all, is clean out the threads. Just using a tap in a, in a drill bit, you know, as a... Just clean them out a little bit because... get rust and all sorts of things in there so and even after you've been sandblasting a bit of sand in there you, you just clean them out it's 5 16th UNF so that was a bit dirty So that's all cleaned out. Next thing, oil can on the pivot. Now the thing is, you oil, you oil after you've painted, not before, because otherwise you won't get paint to stick. And you can see that's making it a lot better than it was before. And just keep putting a little bit of oil on there, let it soak in a little bit. And that's lovely. The next thing is the pivot at the top. There's a little, let me see. I'm going to give this another coat of paint once it's in because it's got a bit of damage, but that little pivot thing there needs to have a bit of oil on it. There, sand's got into it. That's the only problem with sandblasting, it gets everywhere. I'm sort of wash it out with oil. There we go. So the next thing is, we're going to assemble the cylinder. Now, seeing it's a bit of a special treat, we're going to put um, some new washers on. These are a 5 16th UNF. Um, yeah, just a second, I've got to go and get some thread guard. So we're going to put some thread guard on the thread using a brush just in case, just for the future because it, it might be for you to do this next time you might have to take it a bit in the future or somebody else might have to take it to bits and it'll really look a bit more professional if it's all nicely coated and 
rust proofed. So what first of all we're going to wind up the, the lock nut right to the end. Well, not right to the end, but up the shaft a little bit. Then we're going to take our washer thing. Now I've never really sure worked out what this actually does. It's just a, like a shim. It goes over here. I don't know, I, not, not unless the holes are bigger. I think they are actually. I think this was meant for a different type of unit, so they put a sort of a shim piece on. So now we're going to put this shaft in through here. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Forgot the washer. We need to put a washer on. And then we're going to line it up with the hole, just like that. Through the hole, one washer on one side. And then we're going to move this camera a bit, I think. There we go. So we're going to tip this forward, tip this up, and then we're going to put another washer on the shaft and a threaded bit, and then a nylock nut on the other end. And we're going to drop it. So, You don't have to put a nylock one on. In fact, I tell you something, I'm not going to put a nylock one on. Get that washer out, I'm going to get a proper nut. So now we're going to tip this over, if it will. Put the washer on. It's a bit fiddly, but you'll see what I mean. Now originally I had a nylock on this, and I thought to myself I'll put the nylon back on. Nylock back on. But thinking about it... I'm just going to put a regular nut on because it's going to make it awful a lot easier to adjust. There we go. So with that on, now we can put our nuts, the old nuts back in that came off. And again, we're going to give them a, a bit of a coating with thread guard. These nuts don't, you know, these nuts and washers don't really do much. Well, they hold the thing on, but, you know, they're not actually moving around. They'll probably never get taken out again. But we might as well do the job right. So that goes through there. And then, I'm going to put the nut on. Oh, tell with it. Let's put some new ones on. Let's put some new nuts on. What a treat, eh? I'm only saying that because I've got one there. Oh, that's metric. These things here are a mix of all damn sorts, a UNF, metric, or all sorts of stuff. I'm going to go and get some metric nuts. I changed my mind again. I thought, seeing I've come this far, I'm going to put some new nuts on. Because I've got some nice flange headed bolts. I like these because it's almost like having a washer built in. And then I've got some flange headed nuts to put on. They're going to look really smart. Not that anybody's going to see it, of course, but you never know. And again, these are just a bit fiddly to do. Fiddly to get started. Because you're always, you're always fighting against this clutch, the, the pedal itself. That's that one on. See, now we've got oil everywhere now. Look at that. So I'm going to grab a pair of long nose needle, uh, long nose pliers. And then, I'm going to put, with the long nose pliers, we're going to put that bolt down inside. See if you can see that. 
down there and then with a bit of luck try and get that bolt to go through that hole there we go I think it's again like I say it gets it to be a bit fiddly I have known people try to do this whilst it's, whilst it's on the vehicle I don't know how they do it. Honestly, I really don't know how they do it. Um, it's just a bit too fiddly. I mean, you really need two people if you're going to do this on the vehicle. So I always take them off. By the time you fiddled on trying to get the uh, this bottom nut out, because this would actually be the bottom bolt would be actually inside the car. So I'm going to tighten this up when I can get it started. I could use a socket I suppose. I wish I did now. It's getting it started under the nylon that's a problem. There we go. So run it down but don't tighten it up and then do the top one. Again, got to get it started. inside bolt is a bit tricky to get hold of but it's not impossible. I think I'm going to have to get a socket, just hold on. So with the top bolt tightened up, spin them around again and then we're going to try and do the bottom one. Well we're not going to try, we are going to do it. We just do these things progressively because if you tighten one up too much from before the other one's snugged right down, you might have a bit of a struggle getting the thing to line up. Right, so the next thing, we've got to set it up. Now this is always a tricky thing because we're against our stop in here. And if you can see around there, that we're against our stop. What we have to do, if I can get this, yeah. What we have to do is adjust this rod properly. Now you can see there where the shaft, this shaft isn't moving but the pedal is, and that's because we've got some loose on the shaft. So what we want. We want to get this adjusted correctly. Now, just wait a minute. I've got. I've just. I, I think somebody's at the door. Just a second. So I hope you can see this inside. All right. You can see this back. This nut here at the back. Well, I've backed this off almost to the end of the thread, and this one I've backed off to almost to the front of the thread. Now by tipping, I've got the, the actual pedal in the vise so I can, uh, I'm allowed to tip this backwards and forwards. So by tipping it forwards like that, I'm not hitting the bench underneath, but it's against its stop. And remember, we didn't adjust this stop. There was no need really to adjust it. The little nut and bolt at the back. Now you can see here, it's, it's loose. There's a, you see there, it, it's all loose. And this is the key to it. What you've got to do is wind that nut down without moving this rod. Wind the nut down till it just to say takes up any slack. 
because you don't want to pull this if you pull it up with if this nut is tightened down it will start to pull this shaft this like this and you, you don't want that so adjust this one first and then simply wind up the other nut to meet it and the washer just like that now there's a bit of play on there which is a good thing because it should have a little bit of play there is a play, play in the bush but you see if you over adjust this so sort of if you if you push this shaft too far in like towards the, the reservoir you're going to have problems and the fluid's not going to be able to return to the master to the to the reservoir so I'm sort of happy with that so what I'm going to do is simply just nip it up and see once it's assembled whether that's on its stop and it's and it's on its it's on its stop now there is a sort of a cheeky way of testing these things just to make sure that they're a hundred percent right and let's move this camera back a bit see what I do is I take out this I take out the little uh, dust plug that's in here, you know, like the little red plug. Get that out. Damn. Won't come out. There we go. Then I take this off and uh, I clean this a bit. Oh, damn, there's never any paper towel. Just, just hold on. So, what I've done is I've tightened that lock nut up to. to, to so it's so that when the pedal is against its stop you just take up this nut here just so it's just to say touching this pivot and then you wind in this nut to meet it and there should be just a bit of play on the pedal because then you know it's right and to double check it this is what I do I blow down it that's why I wanted some paper towel and if you go like that if you can blow down it and air comes out of there, you know you're right. If you blow down it and nothing comes out, you've over adjusted it. So I know that's right. So that's it. So now I've got to go and look for a cover for it. I put the bung back in, put the cap back on. And that basically is it. I'm going to retouch the paint up a bit. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a clutch master cylinder assembled. It isn't rocket science, it's quite difficult, it's quite daunting the first time you do one. But again, now, if you remember, you remember what it looked like before, it's a little bit better, it's a bit more presentable, and that will be on there for a long, long time. So I hope you like that, and if you get a question, ask me. Talk to you later.